First, we want to pause for a moment to bring you a rare interview with Melinda Gates. Her new book is called The Moment of Lift. It describes her personal experience as the co-chair of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, donating billions of dollars around the world for the cause of global health. Also hearing the stories of women across the economic spectrum. Her work as a philanthropist has led her to become a venture capitalist, now funding companies, partners, and causes that she finds pivotal to societal change. The foundation is where my enormous focus is for women and people all over the world, trying to make sure that people have equal opportunity. I feel, though, that there are gaps in the United States for women and people of color. And so I created this personal office called Pivotal to work on those issues in the United States. And I look at what are the systematic things in the United States through Pivotal that I can work on that hold women back. One of them I'm incredibly passionate about, probably not surprising, I'm a computer scientist, is women in tech. But I'm passionate about it because tech is pervasive in society. If you see, you know, who imagined, when I was working at Microsoft, I didn't imagine, we didn't imagine a phone in our pockets with that computing power, and yet what it allows us to do. And so, to me, when I think about women, I want to make sure that they have an equal seat at the table at creating products, making decisions. And when I see only 2% of venture capital funding goes to women, less than 1% goes to people of color. Now, I know lots of women and people of color that have great business ideas, and yet there's something, there's a systematic bias in venture capitalism that keeps their great ideas from being funded and coming forward, and that shouldn't be. So I'm not only speaking about it, I'm actually putting money down, investments down, that I expect a good return on to make sure those ideas come forward and get funded. You mentioned you're a computer scientist, and when you were going through and getting your degree, getting your MBA, working at Microsoft, you were one of, if not the only, woman in your class in each of those situations. Um, since then, though, the numbers have not improved. They've actually gotten worse in some situations. Why? What do we do? Yeah, so the time I was in college, late 1980s, uh, the number of computer science graduates was in the basically high 30%. And we thought we were on the way up, like medicine and like law, which about have parity now for women and men. But in fact, computer science took a precipitous drop. And we're now at about 19% of computer science graduate or are women. And nobody knows the exact answer. This is another thing about society. We don't actually collect data about women. But we believe that it has to do with when the gaming came into the computer industry. It was, first of all, it was promoted to boys. And all the games that were created were shoot 'em up games and things that boys liked. And girls don't tend to like those games as much. And so it became this self-fulfilling prophecy that more boys liked it and went into it. And so women today don't see the easy pathways into computer computer science, and yet there are things we can do. So what I'm seeing, the colleges that are attracting lots of women in computer science, even if they don't come to, to college to study computer science, they're putting that first CS course out there, and instead of having these theoretical math problems, they have real world problems that women say, I want to solve that, I want to figure that out, and they have more female role models saying to women, you can do this. When we start to do that, women not only start in computer science, they pursue and stay and these are fabulous jobs in society which is why I want to make sure women know that and have these different pathways in